Okay, guys, so script training, we're going over some common objections that people are getting right now during the month of uh, December. And Dewey raised his hand. He said one of the ones that he got today was you called someone and they were at work, right? And they wanted you to call back later. Um, so let's let's talk through that real quick. I'll meet yourself, Dewey. All right. So there's two options, right, that you can play with when someone says they're busy right now or they're at work, right? You can either try to throw your pitch right then and there, like, hey, do you have two minutes? Um, and that can go two ways, right? Either one, you get your pitch out and then they hear you and maybe you get a chance to see if you can take that call forward. Or two, they get upset because they really are at work and they're asking you politely to call them back later, mm -hmm. right? Um, or the other thing is they may not want to talk to you. They don't know who you are. And they're just saying that. Cause I know when I have telemarketers call me, um, since I'm in the business and I'm in the sales game, I'll just be like, Hey, I'm, I'm eating dinner right now. And they're like, most agents will be like, Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, sorry. I'll, I'll call you back another time. Mm -hmm. I say that as like an auto response just to get people off the phone. Mm -hmm. And I would say 90% of the time it works. Like they don't still throw me their pitch. The guys who are good will still like ask questions because they got me on the phone right there. Mm -hmm. So if I have to think about it, uh, you may only want to only have one chance to shoot your shot. Um, so what I would say, like the approach that I would take is I would say, let's role play that real quick, Dewey. So ring, ring, ring. I'm calling you, right? Hey, uh, is this Enrique? No, no, I'm calling you and you're going to oh. tell me that you're at work right now. Okay. Um, ring, ring. Okay, uh, you say ring, ring, you say hello. Hello? Hey, Dewey, uh, it's Enrique, um, PRG Real Estate, your Zillow preferred lender. I was just following up with you. It looks like you had inquired online about purchasing a home. Just wanted to check in with you and, and see if you've heard about the changes in the market. Oh, uh, yeah, but I'm currently busy right now. I'm at work. Oh, you're at work. Hey, I'm so sorry, man. I'm so sorry to catch you at work. Uh, before I, I'll, I'll let, make this real quick. Before I let you go, you had inquired about purchasing a home and there's some really good deals we're seeing right now with homes and there's a lot of opportunity right now. Is that something you still wanted to look into? Yeah, yeah. I I, I still search for home from time to time, but uh, right now is not a good time to call. Would you be able to call me back later? Yeah, absolutely. So so just want to make sure I don't call you back and just waste your time. So uh, what time are you usually off work? Is Can I call you maybe after four or five? Yeah, I'm usually off at five. Okay, after five. I'll call you a little bit after five and then we could talk a little bit more in detail. Okay. All right, sounds good, bye. That's, that's how I do it too. <laughs> okay, because here's the thing, like you have, you have them on the line. So if you right. make it really quick and acknowledge the fact that they're at work, hey, hey, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to catch you at work. Mm -hmm. What I would always say is really quick. I'll say those really words, quick. really quick. You had inquired about buying a home six months ago. There's some really good deals we're seeing. Did you still want some more information on that? Would you like to know about some of these opportunities? And I can call you back mm -hmm. another time. All right. So I basically took my whole pitch. I said, hey, really quick. This is what happened. This is what why I'm calling you. Are you still want to know about this? And then I could set up a time to call you back. And then so I think that's the way to go, because as you see, like in this scenario, you still told me that, hey, yeah, now's not a good time. You still gave me like an extra minute, right? Even though you said you had to go. Mm -hmm. And then I found out that you still are interested, but you just said again, hey, it's not a good time. I'm at work. And I was like, great. Just want to make sure when I call you back, I don't waste your time. Is five o'clock a good time to call you back? Mm -hmm. And then here's the, here's the catch, right? Is what happens is most agents, even if you do that, they won't call the guy back at five. They'll forget or they won't write it down anywhere. And that's the, that's the part that I want you guys to all take away is that we're in the game of like chase people, try to catch them at the right time. If they say call back, you got to call back. So what you need to do is you need to put a note, you need to put something in a reminder, a quick note to yourself. Hey, call Dewey back. He said he is still interested in buying a home call. He was at work. Call back at five. And then now let's role play that again. Now I'm calling you back at five. It's five o'clock, right? Ring, ring, ring. Uh, hello. Hey, Dewey. Uh, how's it going? Hey, it's Enrique. I called you earlier, man, and you were at work. Uh, didn't mean to catch you. You told me to call back at five. Uh, Want to just 
continue our conversation real quick. Right, right, right. Yeah, I, I was busy during that time, but I'm free now. Oh, okay, okay, great. So yeah, the reason I was calling is you had inquired six months ago, you went on Zillow. We're one of the Zillow preferred agents. We help out hundreds of clients a year. And we're seeing some really, really good deals and opportunities right now for buyers. And mm -hmm. I just wanted to see kind of what you were looking to do, you know, with your home search. And if, you know, I can maybe point you in the right direction. Well, yeah, I, at one point I was searching, but right now um, interest rate is pretty high. So uh, I'm just, you know, from time to time I look into the market, but I'm I'm taking it slow right now. Got it. Got it. Okay. Let's stop right there. Okay. But what I want you guys to get as you see how, like we called him, he said he was busy really quick. I slipped my message in there. He said it was okay to call him back. I called him back and now I got him on the line. And then now I'm going to be able to walk through that conversation. Right. I'll be able to talk about, you know, the market and Hey, even though interest rates are, are higher, you know, we're still seeing some good deals, you know, and it really depends on your payment you know, what's a payment you're comfortable with, you know, start asking some of those questions um, to start figuring out if this is someone that I can either book a time with, right? Um, but here's the key takeaway, guys, is a lot of you guys are going to run into this type of thing where you call someone and it genuinely might be the, you caught them at a bad time. Maybe the kids are crying in the back. Maybe they're at work. Maybe they're driving and they don't, they don't want to talk while they're driving, or maybe they're in the middle of something. So you got to quickly cut to the chase. You got to apologize for interrupting them, right? But say, hey, real quick, just wanted to check if this is something you still wanted some information on. Uh, can I call you back at this time, right? And then you're, you're playing that game of callback. Is, is that helpful, Dewey? Yeah, that's very helpful. Um, uh, one thing that I would like to ask is uh, maybe in the future, would there be like a call session maybe later in the day if we were to like change it up or this is no more? Well, so let me let me ask you a question. Are you asking permission to call someone back later in the evening? Uh, no. <laughs> On your own time? <laughs> well, yeah, I, I can, but okay. uh, I feel like the call more uh, call in the morning like uh, I see the pattern of like a lot of people are busy so um I was um maybe call session but I, that's something I should do in my own day, right yeah definitely so um will we have call sessions in the evening yeah we definitely can in the past we've had sometimes we've had call session in the morning and the evening we had two call sessions and we might go back to that just because right now we need to put out more output right now during this market but what I want you to take away Dewey is that in the morning, when you're calling a bunch of people, you're calling, you know, 50, 100 calls, your job is out of those 50 to 100 calls to now narrow it down to like the five or 10 people who want to continue the conversation forward, right? Either the one you got to call back, the one you booked an appointment with, the one who said, uh, call me back in three months. And then it's up to you now to make sure that you're scheduling the, those things and you're adding tasks and FirePoint, you're adding reminders so that you could do that follow-up, right? Remember, prospecting isn't only in the morning, right? That's just when we do it as a team, mm -hmm. but your job as a sales agent is to be prospecting all day, all along, wherever you're at, right? Okay. So you're taking that big list and you're, you're narrowing it down to like, all right, these are the five people I talked to this morning who like said, call me back, or there's like a, there's a second step that needs to happen now, right? And that's the progression that you make. And that's really the game we're playing, guys, right? Is you call a bunch of leads, you find those ones who are a little bit warmer, and then you put them into some sort of follow-up or a campaign, and then you slowly take them down the line until they go from cold to warm to hot, right? Mm -hmm. And you push them down the, down the funnel. Um, and I want you guys to all think about that, right? Like sales is a funnel, right? If I just Google right now, let me see if I can pull something up. Sales funnel stages here we go um this is a good one right now i'm going to share this with you I, all i did was just google sales funnel stages and a bunch of them popped up um but let's see where's the photo at sorry guys let me go back real quick you'll see it here basically Can you guys see this? Oh, what the hell is happening? Google Lens. 
All right. Uh, I don't know if you, could you guys see my screen? Okay, let's just look on the left. I know it's a little, uh, it's actually funny here, but number one is awareness, discovery, evaluation, intent, purchase, and loyalty, right? So stage one is prospecting. If you look here, stage two is going to be qualifying the lead, the initial meeting, defining the prospect needs. Stage five is making an offer, right? If you're offering for them to work with you or a loyalty agreement or a listing agreement, whatever it might be, you're going to negotiate, finalize a proposal, you'll close a deal, you'll deliver the product, right? This is not specific to real estate, but the sales process for any lead is exactly the same, right? The lead comes in, you got to call it, you got to qualify it. You got to see if it's someone that is, is looking to do something. And you got to just slowly move them down the funnel through your follow-up, through setting your one on your consultations. And then obviously after that, if you if they sign up to work with you, then you're going to go out there and deliver what you promised them, right? To help them find a home or to help them sell their home. But it's important that you guys recognize that all sales is basically a funnel. It's a funnel of just moving them down the line. And then when you start to think of your business that way, then you start to think of, okay, if that's the case, then I got to make sure I'm categorizing people correctly. They're being tagged correctly in, in FirePoint. There's follow-ups that are set because my job is to just move them from one stage to the next stage, right? Until eventually you, you get them to meet with you and then you get them to want to transact with you. And then what happens is, is if you don't, if you get stuck on a stage, right? Then all you do is just go back to the step before that. And then you try to get them back to the next step again, right? So sometimes we're, I don't want you guys to overcomplicate the business. Yeah, there's a bunch of things we got to do in between, right? Like that are applied to real estate, but really you're just moving people down a funnel. And when you get leads from like an open house or Zillow or any sort of lead, you're going to move them down that funnel. And that's the process you're following, right? So think about it that way, Dewey. You, the initial prospecting session in the morning, that's your very, very top of the funnel, right? That's you prospecting, trying to find people who have an intent. Then once, you, once the guy says, yeah, I am interested, call me back later, now you just move them to, okay, that's someone that is semi-qualified, he showed some intent, now I got to call him back and see if I can qualify him fully, and then I'm going to make him an offer, which is the offer is going to be for him to meet with me, right? And then if he says, if that means I got to call him back or follow up or call him next week or call him later today, it's still the same steps, right? You're still just going down that, that process. Raise your hand if if uh, if that's something that you didn't like you didn't look at the leads that way like right now the way I explained it. Raise your hand if you're like no nah, I fully understand that like this is the game I'm playing right. Some of you guys have maybe have been in sales longer or you guys have other sales experience but just know that that's the game we're playing with every single lead, right? You're in the game of prospecting, qualifying, moving them down the line, making them an offer, trying to get them to the finish line, right? Um, all right, let's go. Um, what else? Whoever was making calls this morning, give me an objection that you, you encountered who would like to raise their hand and volunteer. Even if it's just, you want to role play it, even if you think you did a good job, but maybe you want to practice it again or something you got stuck on. What were you guys hearing from your calls? I have something. Yeah. Sure. Diana. So uh, one of my flex leads that was active that we looked at property says, I don't think now is the right time for me to buy a house. I think I should wait for a year or so to save up more down payment. And based on the numbers, I'm not comfortable with the mortgage payment at the time. Is it okay if I contact you when I'm ready? Okay. Um, so let's, let's break that down, right? It's important to understand. So what I heard was he was active. He was ready. What changed from when he was active to now? So um, he got pre-approved, was interested on a, in a unit on Jackson Road in Eastside San Jose. He liked that 488 price point and anything over he already didn't really want. Then we ran the numbers and that we looked at another property and then he texted me that. Got it. Okay. So he was interested. He saw a property. 
But then once you ran the numbers, he realized that maybe he couldn't go higher in price. Well, right? Maybe he didn't like the location that we went and saw, you know, on Jackson. So then he didn't like that location. So when we looked at other locations that took it to now 600. And so then that was not really a comfortable payment that he was ready to take right now. His friend just bought a unit. So that's what kind of sparked his interest. Got it. Okay. So here's a couple of things that I would look at it is I would, I would ask more questions, right? I would find out a little bit more detail. Um, if he texts you that I would say, Hey, I totally understand, right? You want to acknowledge what they said. I totally understand you know, having a comfortable payment is important to you because that's exactly what he told you, right? He's not comfortable with the payment or he might want to wait to be comfortable with the payment. So you have to at least say, hey, I hear you. I hear exactly what you said. And then you say, hey, I think it would make sense for us to jump on a quick call because I just want to understand a little bit more and see if there's any solutions that we can provide today or if we should just wait and then come up with a game plan, right? Because having a text conversation and trying to figure it out through text, you're not going to get anywhere, right? So you want to basically, your goal is to take it from text to a phone call or to a meeting or to a consultation. And in that consultation, since it's, he's more focused on payment, you probably want to have a lender on there who's going to be able to present him different options, right? So what I would look at is if he wants to wait a year to save more down payment, that means he thinks he's going to save more money in the future. So is there a way to get him a lower payment now? Maybe with a two, one buy down or a three, two, one buy down or whatever it might be. Right. And you can, if you're able to say, Hey, like what's the payment that you want? And then what's the price point that we're going to be able to find? Are there properties in that price point? And then, Hey, what if we can get your payment lower in the meantime, this way you lock into the market, you lock into a lower price and you start building some equity because a year from now, the properties may be more expensive. So even if you save money from here to a year, but then you end up buying a more expensive house and paying more in property taxes and more and all that stuff, it might be a wash, right? So this is why a question like that, guys, it's, it's not something you're going to be able to handle just like through text message. It's really something where you, you need to crunch numbers and you're going to want to have a lender on there with you that can break them down for you and show different options. And then at the end of the day, once that's all done, then it's up to them, right? You present the information, you give them your opinion, and then you see, does it make sense or not? Uh, Carla, do you have something? Yeah, I think for Diana's perspective, I think what Enrique said that to ask questions, but you have to be really good at it's a skill to frame the questions correctly because you want him to realize like, hey, you're in the same boat as everybody else right now, though. They're all in the waiting game. So what would it look like if you, you have to create urgency, it doesn't take overnight, but at the same time, you have to figure out a skill for you to create urgency for them not to wait in six months. So it could be computation, it could be diet, it could be a dialogue or framing. You really have to like nail that skill to frame all of your questions to get, to express how you, because you have the information already, they don't know. So for them, you have to frame it in a way that's like, oh, I thought about that. You're actually, I'm actually pretty smart. Even though you're framing in, in their mind, it's just like, it's actually my idea. But okay, you're just realizing it now, basically. So Carla, can you give me an example how you might frame something when you're in that situation? Um, if I was in her situation, of course, I'll ask more questions. And why do you think that you need more down payment for you to qualify for six months? They have to give your, they have, they, they should be able to provide you with an answer. And with those answer, sometimes I do, it's just like, okay, if I would provide free solutions for down payment, what would this look like? Give them like a scale of one to 10, all of that stuff. And then they'll provide you another excuse. So a lot of people who are waiting just six months, they have an excuse now that they don't know. And usually what I do, I always present facts. And if sometimes if someone is cornered with facts, they curl like a turtle and they don't know what to do anymore. So I always present facts <laughs> and research all the time. Yeah. And I think at the end of the day, what, what Carla is saying is you need to make sure you ask the questions the right way. You need to make sure you, you also want to dig a little deeper into their logic, right? So there's something called, you guys may have heard me talk about this, follow their logic, right? So if his logic is, I need to wait, I need to wait six months, I need to wait a year to save more down payment because that will give me a better situation, then you need to follow that. Say, okay, great, you know, Mr. Customer, let's, let's, uh, 
let's break that down and let's let's play out that scenario and let's you know see if that's the best scenario for you and then let's play out a couple other scenarios and then you might want to ask a question and this will apply to anybody wanting to wait whether they want to wait after the holidays or they want to wait next year is hey i'm curious you know what benefit do you think you would gain by waiting right or hey if, let's say you did wait after the holidays what do you think would happen or how do you think that would benefit you i'm trying to or, understand or how much exactly are you looking to save yeah how much are you looking to save or how much how much money do you need to save and let's see if that even is even going to make a difference in the payment because let's say he only saved ten thousand bucks in the next year or six months and even with ten thousand dollars more his payment only changed like 10 bucks a month is that really worth waiting right or is there a way to, to save him more money by just maybe playing around with the loan scenario or, or giving him a different option on the loan so, also, Enrique, yeah. I also want to I want to point out that that conversation that Diana is having, instead of coming in in a place of authority, come from a place of curiosity and very collab. Because yeah. if you come from a place of authority and you have information, they don't they're not going to soak up the information you're going to give them. You want to come a place of like better questions like, OK, you have better questions. This is solutions for you. What would it what would it take for you to come up with a solution already at this point so come from a place of curiosity rather than authority because they don't like that yeah uh, that's good that you pointed out guys and that may be you some of you guys may not uh understand the importance of that right there's a difference between like right now i'm just telling you like it is right because we're doing a training but when i would be in the dialogue with the client i'd be like oh okay uh you know jeff so i'm just curious about like you know let's walk through that like i'm curious like okay, you wait a year, like, let's work together on this, right? I'm curious, like, you wait a year, you save us some more money, how much do you plan to save? And let's see, like, what that's going to do. Let's, let's work together and see what that would do to your payments, right? Or what that would do to the affordability or your options. Instead of, right, so the way I'm saying it, I'm kind of saying it really soft, and I'm just being curious with him. And I'm saying, let's work together to figure it out. That's the way Carla is describing it to being collaborative versus saying, Okay, Jeff, hey, you're going to wait a year, but let's see if that really makes a difference in your payment, because I don't think it's going to make a difference. That's me more like trying to be more authoritative and more trying to sell him and close him. So, which you're saying the same stuff, but it's going to have two different results depending on how you deliver the message, right? Uh, so guys, this is a little higher level, right? This is more like now tonality, more like, how do you ask the question? And remember guys in sales, it's not what you say all the time. It's how you say it, right? You can say the same things and you ask it in two different ways and you get a different result. So Diana, let's role play that real quick. So I want you to put on the curiosity hat. Like, let's say, you know, you got, you're on the call with him and he expressed a concern. How would you ask, I'm the client, how would you ask me, you know, with curiosity and wanting to collaborate, you know, how would you, how would you frame that? Okay. Yeah, totally, man. I get it. His name is man, by the way. Oh, man. Right. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, man. I know every time I call him, hey, man, I'm like, oh, okay. So yeah, man, I totally, I totally get it. What I hear you're trying to say is you want to save more down payment because you want a more comfortable payment. So tell me how much do you think that you need to save so that payment is comfortable? What's that number? Yeah, I mean, um, I, I could probably save another 15,000 like in the next like six months. Okay, perfect, 15,000. So you're gonna save 15,000 in the six months. I'm just trying to look back on the data here because in the last six months, if there's appreciation, well, what I don't wanna see, you, uh, what I don't wanna see happen is that you're, Property tax is going to be higher if we wait a little too long, if the prices go up, because looking at the recent sales, it kind of has gone up 5%. So we need to run those numbers with the lender to see if that really makes sense. So let's connect tonight at six. Do you have time? Just so we can just see if it makes sense. The 15,000 would make a difference. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Let's, let's, let's do that. Okay, okay. great. Let's stop, stop role play right there. So that was very good, Diana. Like, it's a soft approach. It's like, hey man, you know, totally understand. Like, you know, like how much did you want to save up? And then what I would throw in is like, hey, let's work together on this, right? Let's figure this thing out together. Um, and let's see if it makes sense, right? Once we have, once I know what you're trying to save and the payment you want, let's talk to the lender and really quickly we'll find out if it makes sense. And then you could decide what's, you know, what's going to be good for you. Is that and then and then you might even want to end it with like the tie down. Is that fair? Does that sound fair, man? 
right? I know his name's Man, so it kind of sounds weird, but does that sound fair, Mr. Man? <laughs> okay, thank you, guys. All right, good stuff. Good stuff, guys. Um, all right, let's go. Who else has something? What's another thing you ran into today? Objection on your calls or objection you're, when you're talking to a client right now? We need some real life scenarios. Who has talked to a client recently that either didn't want to meet or didn't want to meet forward, move forward, or didn't want to book the appointment? What were they telling you? All right, we need some participation, guys. Let's go. Otherwise, that means everyone booked like 20 appointments this morning, right? Like you guys batted 100%. Every person you talked to, you booked an appointment. Teddy, did you make some calls today, bro? Yeah. Okay. Did you book 100 appointments? No. Okay. What's one thing that you got on one of your calls? What's one objection or why someone didn't want to either meet with you or either didn't want to talk? or either didn't want to move forward on any of your calls? What's one thing that you can remember from the call session? Um, one was they said that their all their money was allocated towards other investments. And then they um, I gave them options and they said that they're, they're not ready to change up their lifestyle, I guess. Got it, okay. Now, give me a little bit more context. Were you calling a lead? You were following up with the lead. What was what was the lead? It was from a pawn. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Can you maybe tell me a little bit more? Was it like when did it come in? When did they inquire? Were they interested at one point? I, I they said that it was like long time ago, and it was from the pawn. Okay. Um. So without knowing too much information, right? Because I have limited info. And here's the thing: is is I would make sure. When I'm calling someone from the pond, if it's someone that we've already talked to, you got to go down and read through the notes, right? Go read through the notes and hopefully whoever was the last agent in there, put some notes in there. That'll give you some context as to the last conversation, because this way, when you call, then you can reference back to the last conversation, right? Otherwise you're kind of shooting in the dark, right? When you're just calling someone, it's like a, it's, if you're calling someone you've never talked to and you know nothing about them, because you didn't read the notes, then that's a cold call, right? And you're making your job harder. But if you read the notes and then you now you know some information or you saw the last property they inquired on or whatever, now it's a warm call, right? And a warm call is a lot easier to get an appointment from than a complete cold call because you're gonna say different things if it's warm and you know, you know information versus if it's cold. So that's just the general rule of thumb that I wanna make sure everyone realizes is you gotta go back and check the notes. Now, for this scenario, let's say like at one point they were interested, they were going to, they were trying to, if they're talking about investments, do you know if they were like an investor or were they trying to invest in property or they need someone to live for themselves? Do you know any of that? Uh, I think they were more looking for a primary. Okay. Okay. So then what I would do is when they were saying like, hey, our, our money's tied up in investments or something like that, I would ask a little bit more questions. Just say, hey, totally understand, you know, obviously the finances and, and, and you know, where your money's at is important. Um, just for a little more clarity, you know, at one point, at one point, were you guys looking to buy a primary residence or what was the, what was the plan at back then when you inquired six months ago, right? Because here's the thing, Teddy, is like, you're going to like, for, for someone that tells you that, like, that could mean a investments could mean a bunch of different things. It could mean like their money's in stock and they don't want to pull it out of stock. It could mean like they bought another property already. It could mean they lent someone money and it's invested somewhere else. Like that's a really, really general uh, statement. So if you don't like try to find out a little bit more information about what their initial plan was, it's going to be very, very hard for you to navigate that conversation. So immediately the advice I would give you is to ask more questions about what their initial plans were, and then maybe find out what changed, right? Mm -hmm. So let's role play that real quick, right? So go ahead, throw that objection at me, Teddy. Yeah, um, my money's just tied up right now in investments. Okay, okay, oh yeah, Teddy, totally understand, man. You, you got your money tied up in some investments and uh, obviously, you know, you know, you need to make sure you have enough cash and stuff to make the move. Now, just really curious, um, at one point, you were interested, right, Teddy? Like you acquired six months ago. I see here in the notes, you were looking for a home in downtown San Jose. 
Um, at one point, was was that the plan, or or what was the plan? Yeah, we we were interested, but now now I just put my investments into stocks. Got it, got it. Okay, so you so you put some money into stock, right? Now the money that you put into stock was that going to be like for your down payment and stuff like that? No, I'm just trying to get a return on on the money. Got it, got it. Okay, yeah, totally understand. Now, um, the great thing is that I'm not sure if you've ever heard of uh, any of these programs where you can borrow money against your stock. Have you heard of the, any of those programs? And you actually don't have to take your money out of investments? Yeah. Okay, because we have a resource like that. We actually work with uh, an investment advisor at Chase. Um, I'm not the expert on that side, but I, I basically know for people that have money tied up in investments, they're still able to access some of their cash without pulling it out of the investment. Now, just real quick, because I, I don't want to waste your time, Teddy. Um, if you were able to keep your money in your investments and still find a property and get a good deal, like, is that still in the, in the plans for you guys? Uh, potentially. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, Teddy, because I, like I said, I, I know you got your money tied up. So I just want to make sure, you know, I'm pointing you in the right direction. Here's what I recommend, Teddy. Um, I recommend I, I jump on a, a call with my investment advisor and they can tell you about some of the lending programs they have that can leverage some of your stock without actually pulling it out of the stock. And it, it could be a really quick 10 minute conversation. I can jump on a three-way call with her and we can give you some options. And then you can see from there if it even makes sense for you to you know make any moves right now. Does that sound fair? Yeah, it sounds fair. Okay, so this morning or afternoon work, I got five, I got six, blah, blah, blah. I booked the appointment. Okay. Um, guys, you see that one, like it's, that was a little longer, right? I couldn't just go straight, straight for an appointment because I had to ask a little more information, right? It's, it's going to require, if you want to get good at this guys, it's going to require you to, to think, you know, critically to be able to ask certain questions, but to frame it in a way where you're not like interrogating someone where they don't sound like you're trying to sell them, but you're more like curious and you're more trying to see if you can help them or point them in the right direction. Like Teddy, what, what, what did you take away from that call, Teddy? It was asking more questions and leading the conversation um, from a place out of curiosity. Yeah. Um, right. Curiosity. And that's, that's the big thing. Like Carla said earlier, like curiosity versus authority. Right. Um, now, did you feel like I was trying to sell you? No. Okay. Um, why do you feel like I wasn't trying to sell you? What was I doing specifically? Like, tell me about like my tone of voice, how I asked the questions. Like, what, what did you take away from that? It, it was your tone of voice, but you specifically said that you didn't specialize in this and you would learn, like, it was something we would do together to speak with the advisor about the program. Okay. Okay. Um, do you want to role play that with me, Teddy, and try to try to say what I just said? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, Teddy, yeah, thanks for calling, man. I think I'm, I got my money tied up in some investments, and I'm probably just going to hold off right now. Hey, I appreciate you telling me that, Enrique. What what investments are you tied up in? Um, yeah, I put my money in some stock, you know. So, yeah, I was I was planning to buy a home, and I ended up putting money in the stock right now because it was just sitting in my bank account, and I'm just trying to, you know make some moves right now and trying to get my money to work for me. I appreciate you for telling me that Enrique and would it make sense for you to get into a deal right now and use your borrow money against your stock? Um, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Um, uh, I'm not too sure. So Teddy, ask no, me a little bit, ask me a little bit more about what my plans were. Oh yeah, you uh, you you inquired a couple months ago, Enrique. So, walk me through that plan. What, what was your original plan? Yeah, well, my original plan was to um, yeah, buy. I'm renting right now. I have some. I had some money saved. I wanted to buy a house, and then the market was like a little too competitive, so I kind of waited, and then I ended up just putting my money and buying a bunch of stock right now because the stock is low. So, just put my money in the stock market. Hey, I completely understand Enrique. And in this market, we have a lot of room to negotiate you a better deal. Uh, I have an advisor that can talk to you about how you can borrow money against your stock without selling it. Is this a deal that you're looking to 
get into? Um, I'm not sure yet. Um, yeah, I mean, I wasn't aware of some of those those programs. You know, how does that work? You know, I, I, I'm not sure myself, but what I can do is we can hop on a three way call and my advisor from Chase would inform you on this program. It, does, does that sound fair? Yeah, yeah, that sounds fair. OK, um, let's stop right there. So, Teddy, um, obviously, you're going to have to practice this, right? Like you're saying a lot of the right things, but your delivery is a little choppy just because it's this is a new thing for you. Right. So in order for you to go from sounding like okay to sounding really great and confident, it's just gonna take practice, right? Because you're saying, you have a lot of the pieces of the puzzle and what you're saying, but I threw you on the spot, right? So it, unless you practice this a bunch of times, it's gonna sound a little choppy. So the key thing is always talk about, don't talk about like the sale, don't talk about buying a home, always talk about what their plans were. I think that's a, a shift right there, right? Because when you start using the words like, oh, do you still wanna buy? Would you still make a deal happen? It's like, it's almost like you're trying to just get them to commit to a sale instead of figuring out, well, let's, hey, um, does it even make sense for you to look at something right now? Does it even make sense for you to still look into a, a primary residence? You know, if there was a way for you to access your capital, is that something that would you would even want to look into, right? Or what you would even want to know more about? Notice how I'm, like, I'm not saying like, hey, do you want to buy a home with me? Do you want to go close a deal? Something like that. It's just phrasing it in a way where you're not, they don't feel like you're trying to sell them. They feel like you're more just, you're really interested in what their plans are, right? And that's why I said, ask me questions about what my original plan was, because then from there you can start to give advice based off what the original plan was and see if those are still the plans. Does that, does that make sense, Teddy? Yeah. Uh, you guys gotta remember it like, especially if you're calling leads that are like six months old or you call leads that came in a while back, their plans may have changed, right? They may have had a plan initially, something may have come up, there's a reason why they didn't buy. So you always wanna rehash like, hey, just you know, tell me about what your plans were. That's a good like open-ended statement that you can ask someone. Tell me about your plans. What were your plans? And then obviously if they're, if, if they feel comfortable, then they're going to open up and kind of tell you what they were looking to do, but don't automatically go, all right, I'm going for the sale. Like stick, stick on that level right there. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Where, where'd you guys want to move to? Right. And then what changed, you know, why, why'd you end up holding off? Sometimes we're trying to go straight for the appointment or for the sale without enough uh, rapport building and enough understanding of what their plans were. And that's the part that you'll see the difference in like uh, more of an amateur salesperson versus a more seasoned salesperson is the seasoned salesperson. They're, they're playing like chess. It's like chess, not checkers, right? They're trying to drag out the conversation. They're trying to open up the conversation more because they know that's going to build more rapport. And then at the end, when they recommend the appointment, they're going to be able to get the appointment versus someone who's brand new, who hasn't had a lot of sales. They're going to try to go straight for the appointment. And then they're going to turn that person off because that person feels like you're just trying to sell them. Right. Um, yeah. Carla had a, a good recommendation, you know, on practice. If you're driving somewhere, practice your scripts or create scenarios in your head and learn how to answer them. Teddy, let's role play that one more time because now you'll have, this is your second time to practice that, right? So Teddy, um, yeah, I decided to hold off. You know, I got my money tied up in, in investments right now and I'm, I'm probably just going to wait. I appreciate you telling me that, Enrique. When you did inquire six months back, what was your original plan? Um, you know what? My original plan was to, to buy a home. Um, I'm renting right now. I wanted to buy something. At that time, the market was like pretty crazy. And I kept, I put a couple offers in, I got outbidded several times and then I just decided to hold off. And then I ended up putting my money just in the stock market. Completely reasonable, Enrique. And what would happen, have to happen for you to get into the market now? Uh, that's a good question. I'm not sure. I mean, my money's tied up right now and, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I don't really know what I'd have to do because all my money is tied up right now. Like I had a down payment, but I bought a bunch of stock with this. So I'm just kind of trying to play that out right now and get my money to work. Um, so I'm not really sure. Completely understand Enrique. If there was a way where you could 
have access to that capital in your stocks, would you be willing to? Okay, Teddy, to go back. Remember, you're trying to go for the sale too fast. I need you to build a little more rapport with me. Ask me more about my plans. Where did you want to live, right? Okay. Right, so you got to pump the brakes a little bit. Go back to like, okay, cool. Totally understand, man. Like, and where were you planning on buying it? Like, tell me a little bit more about your ideal home, you know? Okay. All right. okay. Back to you, Teddy. Go. Uh, and Enrique, what, what areas were you looking at? Um, I was actually looking in uh, either downtown, uh, like a, like a high rise uh, condo um, or something, or even like a single family close to downtown. Cause I work, I don't work too far away from downtown. Down, downtown in San Jose? Yeah, San Jose, yeah. And other than downtown San Jose, is there any other areas that you're looking in? Um, no, I kind of had my, I'm a bachelor, I'm single. So I kind of had my, my, my eyes set on like a, a cool, like high rise town, uh, town or condo. I looked at the access building. I put an offer on the access, but I got, I got beat out like on an offer. Completely understand Enrique. And for, for that offer that you put in, how, how much were you willing to allocate back then? Uh, I think we offered like 1.5 million. Um, I was going to put down like 500,000 for a down payment and, but someone came in like 1.7 million. So it was like, they blew me out of the water. So. And I, thanks for sharing that Enrique. Is 1.5 still the range that you're looking in or what, what are you looking in purchasing now? um yeah probably around there i think that would be a comfortable payment okay now teddy now you built a little report now go in for like hey look here's what i here's what i recommend i have you heard of this program or i have this person right hey enrique um that's that sounds great have you heard about a program where you're able to borrow from the stock investments and have access to your capital without having to sell your stocks mm, no i actually didn't know you could do that no yeah, well, Enrique, I have a specialist that I work with at Chase, and we can hop on a three-way call and have her explain to you how you're able to do that. I have a time this week for weekends and weekdays. Which works best for you? Uh, maybe uh, during the week. Yeah, maybe in the afternoon. Afternoon during this week? Um, I have okay. a time this Thursday. Okay, let's end there. All right, Teddy. What, what difference did you guys notice, guys? I mean, I know I'm coaching you through it, right? But those of you guys that are listening, compared to the first time around, now this time around, right? Who, who would like to raise your hand and volunteer? Give Teddy some feedback. More confident, Blanca said. Anybody else? Diana, what did you hear from, from Teddy? That you really cared because you were asking information. So they'll be open to share with you because you. Okay. More rapport, right? You built more rapport. You had more rapport. So the big takeaway for Teddy and for everybody else, the more questions you can ask someone about their situation and dig a little deeper and, and peel the onion back, the more they're going to feel comfortable when you finally do recommend that we meet for an appointment, right? If you only ask a couple questions and then you go straight for the appointment, it's too short, right? It's like if you just like met someone and you ask them on a date like five minutes later and they're like, I don't even know you, man. Like, <laughs> right, I'm not gonna go on a date with you, right? Or if you're trying to like recruit an agent who's never seen what your team is or anything like that, right? Situations where you're trying to sign someone up and there's no report built, there's no relationship built. You got to build more relationship, right? More rapport, ask more questions, be curious, come from that place. And then at the end, hey, totally understand. Like, here's what I recommend, right? Here's what I recommend. And then you can say, hey, we have this advisor. And then you can go from there and start recommending stuff. But remember, Teddy, like if I just met you and like we barely talked for like two minutes and you start recommending things, like you haven't earned the right to recommend things to me. Does that make sense? Yeah. But if we had like a 15 minute conversation and we were laughing and we're talking and you're asking questions, you know more about me. I know more about you. Then when you recommend something now, it's like, all right, like I've already kind of, you know, checked Teddy out. He seems like a cool guy. He seems like a professional. Remember, this is all over the phone. Right. So the only thing they're going to go off of is the conversation that you've had with them. Right. Because they can't see what you look like in person. 
They haven't seen your website. They don't know who you are. You're just a guy calling them from a pond, right? So uh, I think that's the takeaway is, is everyone on this call, when you're calling people, you have to build more rapport and you have to show them you care for them to care enough to meet with you and stuff like that. All right. Um, thanks, Teddy. Thanks for putting yourself out there, brother. This is, this is how, you, how you get better. Uh, the other thing I would recommend to Teddy is, and this is just being completely like, you know, frank and candid with you is more energy, like more energy, uh, laugh a little more, chop it up a little bit more, like put a little bit more of your flavor and your personality into it. So it doesn't, so the conversation doesn't sound like, so like, just like dry, right. Just kind of straight to the point, because that's going to be more of like tonality, right? Like laugh with people, agree with them. Hey, totally understand. Hey, that makes sense. You know, I had another client like elaborate a little bit more when you're responding back to them. Cause if it's just like, Hey, thanks for sharing that. And then you go to the next question. Oh yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Then go to the next question. They're not getting a, enough flavor of like who Teddy is. Right. And someone who does a really great job at this is, is Blanca. I'm a, call it, put her on the spot. If any of you guys have ever talked with Blanca, how is she when you, when you talk with her? <laughs> right? Like, does she make you feel comfortable? Why does she make you feel comfortable? Alessandra, why does Blanca make you feel comfortable when she talks to you? Uh, unmute yourself. Hello. Yeah. Uh, she sounds like she cares. Um, she listens. Yeah. <laughs> what's her demeanor is she laughing is she serious is she even when she i call her and answer and she's like what's up like hey i don't know she motivates you there you go right so then you feel comfortable right you feel comfortable talking to her and the same thing with her clients when she deals with clients it's always from a place of caring laughing understanding agreeing smiling right always smiling right and that's why people feel comfortable talking to her right that's why she was blessed out of blessed with that or i don't know blanca were you were you blessed with that personality like all your life or is that something you've learned to like channel <laughs> i i think i've always been like that okay. i think she's overall, laughing what she's talking right now right I mean, you just want to laugh right yeah i think overall i've just always been like that it was funny because i'm gonna it's funny that you're saying sharing this right now because our niece and nephew were visiting from la over the weekend and I hadn't seen them for Thanksgiving and I saw them on Saturday and I was saying hi to them and they're teenagers. So they're cool. Right. And as I was walking away, um, my niece, Elise tells the other nieces and nephews, isn't she always so happy and in a good mood? Like I've never seen her pissed off. <laughs> and I turned around cause I overheard her and I said, you don't want to see me pissed off, <laughs> but I think overall, I've just been like that, but I've learned in this business, you mirror and ma and mirror and match because there's times where I'm a little bubbly. And then on the other end, you, you know, you got to kind of tone it down if you need to, depending on how the client is sounding, et cetera. But you yeah. always, I try to always just reassure, make them feel good. Yeah. Right. And <clears throat> if you, if you have ever been in a, in a sales conversation with Blanca or been on an appointment with her, that's a key thing that she always does. She like always never makes the client feel like they're wrong. Always reassures them like, Hey, that's totally understandable. Hey, absolutely. Hey, there's, of course, you definitely want to do that. Right. You definitely want to inform yourself. You, she's always reassuring them that whatever they're thinking or feeling or why they're doing something like it's okay to do that. Right. And I think that goes a long way with creating trust. So some of us, Blanca is someone that maybe has that naturally. There's some of us that also are able to do it, but they're, it's not natural and they have to, you know, they have to turn that on, right? Um, for me, I can honestly say like, I'm kind of 50-50 if, if I have to look at it, but I have learned over the years how to get into character and how to play the game when I'm talking to people, right? When I have to be serious, I know how to be serious. When I have to laugh it up and, and be a little more bubbly and personable, I know how to turn it on. And it's, a, it's something that just from, from constant practice, right? So we got to remember, guys, that all this scripting, that's more of like, all right, this is what you say, 
but then the how you say it is the personality, the tone, the energy, how you make them feel. You got to have both of those dynamics, right? Because let me ask you this. If, if you talk to someone that knows everything and is always telling you like exactly what to do, but they're not nice, what do you, what, how would you feel about that person? How does that come off, right? Oh, Mr. Know-it-all. Yeah, you know everything, right? Like, even though like, but if you talk to Blanca and she knows everything, but she's really nice about it and she presents it in a way that makes you feel really good and really comfortable, then it's like, no, this is someone that's really knowledgeable and someone that I really enjoy working with, right? So you can't, you can't be one dimensional. You have to be both. You have to know your stuff. And then you also have to be able to deliver it in a way that makes the client feel comfortable, right? So Teddy, what do you got to work on now that you've heard this conversation? Tonality and being a bubbly. Being bubbly, right? Uh, Teddy, are you naturally a bubbly person? No. All right. What about when you're with your homies or with your friends? How are you? No, I don't, I don't hang out. You don't hang out. All right. Maybe you need to hang out more, right? <laughs> um, but I've seen you, I've seen you behind the scenes a little bit. Like when you're talking to some of the guys in the office, or you guys are saying, what's up, what's up, Teddy? When you're talking to Rudy or whatever, right? Like I've seen you let loose and open up a little bit. Um, obviously right now, like in front of everybody, I'm putting you on the spot, but I think it's something where you, you have to acknowledge that if you're a quiet person, raise your hand if you think you're like a more of a quiet person. Ooh, let's see. Alessandra, Diana, some of you guys, I'm like, yeah, you guys are a little quiet. Dewey, you're a little quiet. Francisco, you're a little quiet. Alessandra, you, I've seen you both. You're a little quiet. Diana, I would never think you were a quiet person because every time you talk, you, you, you put it on. Cass, you're a quiet person, bro. I would never know that, bro. Like you speak up, like, you know what I mean? Like, so you see, which I want you guys to see guys is some of, some of these people are maybe naturally quiet, but then they turn it on right? There's some people that are just naturally loud, like naturally bubbly, naturally like that. And they may have to turn it down a little bit sometimes. So recognizing who you are and what your tendencies are, are important as well. It's called self-awareness, right? Being aware of how you naturally are and then how you need to be when you're in the sales environment is key. So really quick guys, uh, we're coming up on time. In the chat, I'm going to put this in Slack. So I want you guys to go in Slack. And the question is this, based on today's role play, what area do you need to turn it up on? Do you need to turn up your tonality? Do you need to educate yourself more? Do you need to practice more? Um, do you need to, I'm going to respond to my, my thing. Um, what area in the sales process do you need to improve on uh, just hit reply or work on right i just posted it in in slack hit reply based off everything you just learned today on this call what area tone personality knowledge do i just need to practice my script so i'm a little more confident um do I need to do both? I need to practice my scripts and I need to turn up the turn up the energy. Do I need to turn my energy down? Like I'm maybe too loud and I need to back off a little bit. I may be too much for some people. Uh, Teddy wrote, using tonality to build more rapport ask more questions and be more curious. Teddy, let's role play real quick, tonality, right? How can we role play tonality real quick, right? So uh, I'm gonna tell you my money's, the same, the same thing, I'm gonna tell you my money's tied up in the stock market. And if you had to turn up your tonality and personality to like reassure me or agree with me, how would you do it, right? Like. So, hey, Teddy, yeah, thanks for calling, man. I, I, I decided to hold off. I ended up, you know, putting my money in the stock market. I kept getting outbidded and, 
my money's kind of tied up right now. So I don't, yeah, I'm probably going to hold off. Oh man, Enrique. I mean, walk, walk me through that. What was your original plan back then when you were trying to purchase? Uh, all right, dude, right off the bat, that was a major improvement right there. Let's give Teddy a round of applause, right? Like, what did you do? What were the subtle things he, he, you did right there, Teddy? Um, I elevated my, I was playing, I elevated my voice to like show empathy, like, oh, you didn't get the deal, but what was your original plan? Like uh, coming out of curiosity, like making it uptone a little bit. Yep. You see that guys by just, just him, like, oh man, Enrique, right? Like, he was even kind of smiling. He even stood up a little bit. He kind of elevated his voice. But just by you doing that, Teddy, your call will already be dramatically better because there's more energy on the call, right? Oh, man, Enrique, like, oh, man, I totally understand, man. What was, your, what was your original plan when you were buying a home, right? Now it's like curiosity. You leaned in a little bit. Now I'm like, uh, I would be more open, especially me. Like if you were talking to me and I'm a little more animated, I would be more open to, to conversating with you, right? Um, so Teddy, that was a, a really, really good example of just switching the tonality. What I would advise you to do, Teddy, is channel that energy every time you make a call, right? And then adjust it depending on the person you're talking to. But start off with that energy. And then if you got to pull back a little bit, you can always like lower your voice a little bit and lean in a little bit more, right? Or if you got to step it up because the other person's just like talking like crazy, then you might have to talk like crazy too, right? And like, that's how it is. Even culturally, guys, like in different cultures, like you get around like the Mexican families, like you go to one of my, my uh, family's house for a party or something, like it's loud, like it's loud. Everyone's talking, laughing. You get around my tias and stuff, like they're going crazy, right? Like they're talking, they're cussing. Like if you're the quiet one, they're looking at you all weird. Like, hey, what's wrong? What's wrong? Right? What's up with you? Have a beer, right? Like that's my tia Lydia. I have a tia that does it all the time, right? Hey, hey, stupid, right? Like they're like stuff like that, right? Come on, come and eat, come and eat. Like that's just the way like it is, right? Like it's, it's a, some, even in some cultures, right? But as you guys see, like the energy and the tonality and all that, that goes a long way of how someone feels the conversation is going or how they feel the relationship is going. Um, all right, Teddy said, tonality, build more rapport. Juan, ask more questions, be more curious. Tonality, knowledge, perseverance. I need some practice more to feel more confident. Sandra, uh, I don't know if you hung up, but yeah. If you need practice, this is now mapping out a plan of how you're going to practice, right? Remember, all of these things that we're talking about today, you now can put them in an action plan. If you need more practice, okay, when am I going to practice? How often am I, am I going to practice? What time am I going to practice? And is that in my calendar to practice, right? Otherwise, just saying I need practice, it's not going to happen if you don't put a plan behind it. Following the leads, logic more, Jomo, awesome. Uh, Dewey, I need more tone, practice being curious, also feel more report. Yep. All right, guys, this is all we got today. Uh, give yourself a round of applause for showing up on today's training, doing the work while other agents are sleeping. You guys are over here practicing your skills and trying to get better. Go out there and put some action plans together. Bring that energy, guys, because people need it right now, right? People need you to be the voice of reason. They need to be the person that reassures them on that it's a great time to buy or sell. So we got to go out there and take some action. Let me know if you guys need anything. Peace. All right, okay. Let's go.